pine uh, just at the beginning of our wood road. So we had a request from a viewer after doing our healthy and unhealthy trees to, to learn more about the decision of what trees to cut. So I think it was important to, before we get into the topic of what trees to cut, does, to, to address the topic, does cutting work? Does it make any sense? So we, we're going to visit four, five, six different locations around the woodlot and just basically demonstrate what is going on after cutting. So here today uh, we have this uh, very nice white pine growing free. We did that by cutting out five white spruce that were basically surrounding this tree and then a another one further down. So besides freeing the white pine, if we look at the ground, we can see right down here, this is a red oak. Now I believe we planted this one, but just out over here, We have this one right here, which is natural regeneration. We have a mature uh, red oak just up the hill there, just less than 100 <laughs> feet away up the slope. So if we look around uh, here, this strikes me as possibly some blueberry. Likely. Uh, somewhere in here is a mountain ash, some of this stuff I honestly... That's a shrub. <laughs> uh, I'm sure somewhere in here we have mm -hmm. a mountain ash. I think right here. We got a... Oh, that's just a... <laughs> that's one we must have pulled out. Ah, right there. Yes. Thank yeah. you. And I think another one down there. I think there's a few little guys that yeah. are just starting. And, and the mountain ash, of course, are not a, a large uh, species in terms of the woodlot, but as a producer of berries, there are, they are important for, for wildlife benefits. And birds. And birds, birds really love them. I think I might see, looks like a big leaf over there that could be a uh, striped maple. Yeah. Over in this area, there was a large white older white birch that I cut out there and that's all that's red maple, maple maple that's coming up through there. So these are some of the things that happen. Uh, so far we're not getting any actual white pine generation here. No, uh, but there are pine cones. Yes. Because I see one laying right down in there. I picked one up on the road and tossed over on the other side. So he is beginning to lay down seeds. Yeah. So we'll go off to another spot. Okay, so this is another area that you may have shown, we've shown you before. This particular area, uh, several acres, is quite heavily dominated by white ash. Uh, but there is, uh, this is one of the most diverse uh, areas within our woodlot though, I think I think our forester said we have, oh, roughly a dozen different trees in here. Along the edge of the ditch here, I cut out large, mostly large conifers, mostly white spruce, uh, some fir. Maybe a fir or two. The, the whole purpose of that is that this stand, which to me is one of the most beautiful parts uh, was totally, virtually totally invisible because of this screening. So that was the only objective there. But... So since then, you've started working in the stand itself though. Yes. Our objective 
is to try and and create a resilient forest which is as resistant as we can possibly make it to the effects of climate change. So that basically means favoring species that will do well or do less worse. <laughs> less poorly. <laughs> less poorly. Uh, with, with increasing uh, warming of, of our climate. Uh, but it also means, like in here, uh, instead of having virtually 80% in the small area of, of white ash, that we try and create additional diversity. Well, uh, and especially the white ash is uh, likely to be affected by the emerald ash borer in the next few years. So. Well, we will, we're not going to say likely. <laughs> it may. Okay, it may. So let's take a short walk. So if we look at some of the regeneration that's going on in here, uh, the regeneration is to a large extent because of cutting out trees and getting some sunlight down on the ground. Uh, this is a white spruce. Just like the it's, big white spruce that you cut along the road, right? It's, it's not harming anything. <laughs> uh, leave it as for a bit of diversity. But down here we have some red maple, some more red maple. Uh, red maple is a very well suited tree for climate change. And again, it's creating some additional diversity within this significant amount of white ash. Well, and I see, is that maybe a yellow birch down in there? Uh, not sure, this one over right here? Right here, yeah. We do have a large yellow birch on the edge of this, so. Unfortunately, my skills in reading this- This is the baby guys. <laughs> stuff on the ground. Uh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's not think? Okay. boat shaped enough. Um, There's a lot of red maple in red here. Red maple, red maple, uh, the bigger stuff through there is red maple. Uh, uh, there's a couple of stripes. Yeah, yeah striped couple maple. Of stripe. uh, and I'm pretty sure there's a few pine. Planted, yes. Uh, and we, we do have in here a couple of uh, planted red oak that we'll visit here in a second. Uh, the striped maple, I'm a little concerned about because uh, it, it can be almost in, an invasive and can get quite dominant within a stand if, if allowed to be. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that. Yeah, we don't have a lot of them yet, so. No. Here we have a uh, I believe it's a planted, Debbie seemed to think it was natural, red oak. Again, before cutting trees, there wouldn't be enough sunlight on the ground here for this tree to grow successfully. So by cutting out a big white spruce right here, uh, it now has the opportunity to flourish and grow with really virtually no competition. Well, and you'll notice he's all surrounded in brush. That's, yes. that's deliberate. Deliberate. To attempt to keep the uh, white-tailed deer from chewing them off, which is a big problem with seedlings here. Yes, they are. <laughs> They're hungry critters. Okay, so we're looking here at two of only three mature red oaks that we have on the property. So the first objective, uh, going back probably nine or ten years ago, was to come in and cut out the immediately competing species and give them some room because they were quite, quite suppressed. Uh, mostly fir, I think, was a competing tree. And then later, after and a couple of times actually, maybe every two or three years apart, I would come in and gradually cut more. Uh, mostly uh, fir again, uh, leaving some of the red maple. I think there's a white birch that was left. And with, with no planting in this area, here's what we're starting to get. 
So this little guy uh, is growing actually right in the ditch for the road. Now I'm thinking he should probably be moved. Uh, I'm inclined to just kind of lift him up and move him to the other side of the road. Michael thinks he's fine where he is. But uh, I'm just thinking I'd like to get some oak on the other side of the road as well. So then this little guy, so this is just beside the second slightly smaller oak. And there's also some red maple coming up in the same area at this point. And I believe there's some maple here, but I think there's also uh, a little mountain ash starting right there too. Now, Michael, what have you got? Well, uh, people may wonder why I leave trees just laying about uh, in areas where we're trying to get some regeneration. And this is a, a prime example right here. Uh, red oak, and he's protected. He's virtually, unless they really work hard, which they don't <laughs> typically do, they meeting the deer. Deer. Uh, he's deer proof. Uh, and anything else that comes up in around in us underneath there will be protected from from browse for years to come. So this and this, that this is one red oak. Two uh, branches. Two branches. Natural regeneration, no planting, uh, just put in some uh, shrubbery for protection. Another companion, mm -hmm. they're about uh, eight or ten feet apart. He doesn't have as much protection. No, I put a bit in there. But... <laughs> may want a little more. Okay, I think maybe he's a little more protected now. Has a better chance of surviving. This is maybe 50 feet from those last ones. We do have a flag here on that little piece of barberry, but I'm not seeing anything growing in among the brush. So whether we had a little oak that died, but like most things, maple, uh, you don't get 100%. You don't get 100%. There's <laughs> nothing perfect about this. Uh, and it's probably as much luck that we've gotten as many red oak here as we have versus fir or other things. Yeah, it's it works in an imperfect manner. <laughs> like most things. Let's exactly. go check out another area. <laughs> so what we've looked at so far are areas on the woodlot where Michael's been working away at uh, thinning out and increasing the diversification opportunities. This is uh, a little further out the road, an area that was part of the commercial thinning that was done a few years ago. And there are a number of mature white pine that were left behind. And all through there, and I'm not stomping through it at the moment, but all through there, there is uh, a ton of little white pine regen coming up in there. And what we took out was probably what, mostly fir and birch, Michael? Oh yeah, fir, fir particularly, I think, right in this particular spot. And to be clear, there's certainly fir that was left behind, fir that's regenerating. Yes, because we didn't denude it. No. <laughs> and I don't know what the survival rate is if we have several hundred uh, pine seedlings down. But where we have presently three mature white pine in this mm, pine roughly acre, acre size, <laughs> we certainly have the prospect of having dozens and possibly hundreds of mature pine here in the future. So it, it's working from the point of view that we're, we're increasing the number of our valuable trees and therefore decreasing the, the percentage of invaluable trees. Well, and the ones that probably won't do as well during climate change either, so. For sure. It does work, within limits, of course. So thanks for watching.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> what's what's the message here, Mr. Hickey? <laughs> well, uh, you just said it. Uh, I I have a strong belief on the results that we have been getting, both personally and from the commercial cut. That uh, that this kind of cutting of your woodlot can can improve the the species diversification and in the right spots it's also increasing significantly the number of trees that are likely to be well adapted for climate change so uh, to my mind it's a win-win and you know uh, well worth doing yeah and and again further away from this this area right here because here we're getting natural regeneration because of the money we made off the commercial harvesting here we have the money uh, still in the, our piggy bank to have put in that road and and to pay for uh, somewhere in three to five thousand pine seedlings to be planted to go in and to be clear there is no intent to create a pine plantation no <laughs> no glyphosate is being used this is not a pine plantation no this is scattering them around in through what's already there yes yeah. right no plantation not not plan not happening mother nature does not like plantations no in fact one of the things that that uh, was in a force connect video it, it showed what, and they use the term resilient. Resilient means a, a forest that can adapt to, to, to bad circumstances, which includes climate change, bug infestation, whatever. Yeah, I've got one of those right now. I'm chasing them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so it showed a picture of, of a, a diversity of deciduous conifers, uh, tall trees, large trees, small trees, trees in the undergrowth. And then it showed a picture of a non-resilient forest. And it was basically, I don't think the species matters, but it was a red pine plantation that this is not what you want to do if you are concerned about the future of your woodlot. No, because if something comes in and attacks your pine, you've got nothing. Right. And the wildlife certainly doesn't yes. like plantations. Anyhow. Anyway, thanks for watching. Apologize for the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take the teacher out of them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little passion about this. Anyhow, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please share uh, with someone who might enjoy this video also. Uh, like, subscribe, and, and certainly comment if there's anything further you'd like to us to focus on. Thanks again for your support. Stay safe. Catch you next time.